Alright, we're ready to start. Alright, today we're going to talk about our walk of faith. Get in the back, um, hopefully we'll get a time to kind of discuss it among ourselves. If not, we could follow that through probably in the groups. Um, so I'm sure all of us could wax lyrical on what faith is. Yeah? We're looking for confirmation in, among us. Yeah. yeah? Jamie, Jamie will tell us what faith is. Jamie, you want to lead us off on that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want my opinion? Yeah? Should we give a time for this, <laughs> 30 seconds. Okay, so the way that I describe faith when I'm talking to young people is if you imagine a fire at the other end of a field, you can't taste the fumes, smell the smoke, um, hear the crackle of the woods. All of four of your five senses deny that there's a fire there, but the fact that you see it overrules. So faith is like our sixth sense. Though we can't, we not, might not believe that we're forgiven or feel like we're forgiven or sound like we're forgiven, the fact that God says it means that it's true. So faith is the choice to believe uh, what he says over any and all thoughts that we might have to the opposite. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, I probably can. <laughs> it's probably going in a different direction I was planning to take us. <laughs> uh, let me see if I could bring that back. <laughs> yeah, so, no, thanks, Jamie. Um, what I want to, if I was to provoke one thing today, what I want to provoke is that, provoke within us is that we don't make these things platitudes. We don't make these things just phrases that we bang off. It must be something that is living inside of us, all right? And Jamie, what Jamie focused on there is the ability for that sixth sense, that ability, that, that thing that proceeds by the word of God. Um, sorry, I didn't plan this. The words of that song that we just had, that word is a lamp unto my feet. If you could bring that back up. Sorry, I just like... So faith there. Yeah. And when we were singing that just now, when Mark was leading us, that jumped out at me. You know, the faith of Jamie saying, hey, there's a fire at the end of the room. And though your senses cannot perceive it, God may deposit something inside of you that tells you, hey, this is real. And quite contrary to your, what your senses perceive as a reality, to me, faith allows us to, I, I, I phrase it as, faith is the word of God that comes to you and the ability to walk in obedience to it because he is, all right? Um, we're probably going to spend a quick time today looking at some what we'll call heroes of the faith. So we'll probably focus on Hebrews 11. But what I want us to do also is to see the evidence of faith at work in our lives. And if we're all here because we're on a journey of faith, then we should be able to come up with a lot of examples of what that means for us if we are living by faith. Is that reasonable? Assumption or expectation? All right. So um, if you go back to the slides, uh, Pax. So we're going to look at Hebrews 11. We'll probably take a quick look at Deuteronomy 6. But um, while Pax is bringing that up, I think the penultimate verse of um, Hebrews 10 talks about the just shall live by faith, but also that God will find no pleasure in those who draw back from it. So it is not an optional thing. You can't be in the body and deciding, you know what, I'll decide to believe God now and some other times I will not believe him. All right. And then he goes on to Hebrews 11 and it said, verse 1, he said, Now the faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we see what Jamie was talking about there. Yeah. Then it said, For by it the elders obtained a good report. And it speaks about... Um, I think it goes from here down to verse 22 or 32. It talks about a lot of the heroes of the faith. Um, but I'm going to skip past all of that. And we're going to go to verse 32. And I found it quite interesting, the people who are mentioned, who the scripture did not have time to even mention in those verses above. Guys like David, guys like Samuel, Gideon, great exploits. But also... I said, God, you know, how do I ensure that I'm living in this, but also fulfilling this? 
Because the ultimate end God said that they can't be complete except by us. So after all those exploits, he said, hey, these are the other people I can't speak about, but also all of them put together. Their walk of faith can't be completed except by us. So there's some expectation of something we need to walk in. And therefore, we need to be very soberly minded that uh, we need to be discovering what is the walk of faith for us. Um, so I'm going to... I want to focus on the hearing. And Jamie said that word that came, that sixth sense, that something exists outside there. If we go to the next slide, and I think this is Romans 10, 17. I can't recall. But it talks about... No, if you go back there. So the faith comes by hearing. So let me see those who could say that they hear God's voice. Who want to tell me what forms that take for you? Guys, we've got a, Angela? Pictures. God speak to you in pictures. Anthony? A really strong impression. Really strong impression. Avril, hands are going up. <laughs> Claire? <laughs> Dave? I thought you told me your parents are away. Jeremy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I saw you said my parents are away this week. <laughs> Anybody else on this side? Yes, Lynn? The written word of God. Yeah. Julie? Sorry? Okay. All right, so if we just reflect on that, we've heard through the scriptures, through a very strong impression in our hearts, through people speaking to us, be it peers, be it seniors, be it junior, wherever it is. Um, so there are many ways of hearing God, but, uh, and the scripture is littered with that as well. But I like the fact that, and we, I think John has shared on this before, how we weigh those things and we discover way beyond the words what God is speaking to the heart, yeah? So if we look back at the story of Abraham with Isaac, there was a sense of clearly hearing God ask to sacrifice the son, being very aware of all the prophetic words that went before, that I'm going to give you a son, and out of him shall I bless you. And um, I think John had two lads pulling him very gently last week and talking about holding things in tension. And he said, sometimes it sounds contradictory, sometimes the word of God that comes to you. But there's a responsibility enough to hold those things in tension, but to still see God through those both utterances, those impressions in our heart. All right? So if we were to go back to Hebrews 11, we, I don't need you to flip back their packs. We'll see that some guys, it may be in terms of their personal walk, it may be something they had to do for someone else. Um, it may be, may be something in terms of laying down their lives, but all across all of those accounts of what it is to hear God and to live by faith, they had a responsibility to know what was the intent of God and to go after and to pursue it, quite contrary sometimes to the personal consequence from walking in God's word. All right? So I want to suggest that faith for you to walk in faith, you've got to be hearing God. You've got to have, be alive to the Spirit. And there is a scripture in, I think, 2 Timothy that talks about, you know, just before I say that, faith is not believing that God exists. Does that sound contrary? Yeah? You could believe God exists and still not have faith. Yeah? Um, the scripture talks about even the demons believe he exists and shudder, all right? And faith also is not believing that God is all-powerful. So you can't decide to want the rain to stop and then decide just to pray for the rain to stop. And because you believe God is powerful and your desire is for the rain to stop, 
you join those two things together and it produces faith. That's not faith. All right? So it's not wishful thinking. It's, yes, believing God exists, but walking in accordance to God's sovereign direction. All right? So it has to be marrying God's power, your belief in his power, but also with his sovereign direction. And I find it quite interesting when we go back to Hebrews. If you go to the, the slide just before this. No, one before that. The accounts of Abel's faith was him offering a sacrifice. And if you go one slide down, facts. A lot of these things here had to do with almost one act. And I was saying, God, you know, if you're describing faith, talk about somebody believing you for all their life. <laughs> but the scripture didn't record it as, as such. It recorded it as, I think Samson was there. I was like, hey, Samson went <laughs> against God. He shouldn't, he shouldn't have his name mentioned there. You know, only those guys who, after accepted um, the reality of God, went through their whole life with a sense of um, commitment, all true and true. So what I found interesting in this is that God looks at acts in our life or moments in our life where we decide to take him on his word. And as Abraham, he reckons it as righteousness. Okay? So I want to say the small moments of our lives are sometimes significant in the eternal plans of God. So you must not belittle those words that may come. It may come from a child or from your spouse or your friend. That may be the moment that God is pivoting a whole kingdom um, moment of significance upon. And if you stand in that moment and say, you know what? This isn't as mighty as splitting the Red Sea. This is simply speaking to my neighbor. This is simply paying the toll for the person that is just behind me. This is simply just showing an arm of generosity to the person in my class. I remember this, this situation, as I said, that with Nathan and Chris. And Chris once shared with us that you um, assisted him on his first day in school or something, or he helped you or something like that. I think Chris was the more spiritual one in the story. <laughs> but um, these little moments of encounter can lead us to a part where we and also the individuals come into a greater revelation of Christ. If you go to the next slide. Now about two weeks, two weeks ago, I was in bed. God, I, I got up and this just stirred with me. Faith comes by hearing. And I, back then I knew that I was going to be sharing on this Sunday. And I remembered what I was sharing with total surrender. So I came up with this formula. Not saying that God always moved by a formula. And I'm not at all mathematical in my... In my uh, yeah, I am an accountant. I have to suffer for that. <laughs> but I had total surrender e equals the promise plus revelation plus additional spoils. So I woke up at sometime in the wee hours of the morning and I typed that on my notepad. And then, um, on my iPad. And then I started to pull off some accounts of it. Quite interestingly, when I was preparing for this morning, this morning or late last night, I realized that a lot of the examples actually flowed. <laughs> in terms of Hebrews 11, which I told will go this week. I'm going to use that to share. Um, but I was just re writing them in genealogy as I remember them from the scripture. But um, what, 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 what provoked me with this is that in these guys deciding to surrender to God, somehow the promise of what God was telling them was released. They had an increased revelation of God, but also God gave them additional spoils. And if we come right down to here, who's Jesus? There was a sense in which, and Paul, there was a sense in which they knew going to Jerusalem or Rome, they would have lost their life. But somehow, even after that happened, they received the fulfillment of the very thing that God was after. So I think our journey of faith, everybody's zeroing in that. We probably should move that from their packs. <laughs> everybody's reading. What, what, I, what I want to suggest to you, let's forget this a moment, is that our journey of faith, or when we come to this, discuss it shortly among ourselves for five minutes, I want you to focus in on what was a moment when God 
clearly spoke to you through someone else or a deep impression on your heart. Try to reflect on what was the thing that you thought was the promise. I'm going to give you a son. I'm going to give you whatever. I want you to reflect, now in hindsight, what added sight of God did you receive through being faithful to hearing God and acting in accordance to his word. But I also want you to consider, quite in addition to the promise, what else did God give? So if that was Jesus, he said, I'm going to make you the savior and the lamb. He probably thought that he needed and the rule of, rule of um, the high priest or the king. But if you were standing there before Gethsemane, you probably think, well, I can't die <laughs> because how can I be ruler if I'm dead? Yeah? So that is the promise. But by dying, he became for eternity our high priest and our king. And the added spoils is, and, you know, all that, you know, Christ has become according to the order of Melchizedek. When I was talking to Wilco just on Friday, I had a chance, we were just reflecting this. I said, Wilco, if we use that in Wilco's context, if we go back to September, September, you were in a job that you believe was going nowhere. You had some tr uh, tribunal issues on your job front. Um, but let's fast forward to now and talk about the reality that we exist in now. And probably Wilco could share on that if he so chooses in the group that he is. We also had the situation with Claire, and I'm not focusing on tribunals or disciplinaries or whatever, but that decision to pursue this other job and at the time, you know, submitting to Anthony and, 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 and his wisdom and, and, and him declaring that I don't think this is it and the posture that her heart should, should go after. And all that Claire testified quite recently about what God did out of that circumstance. And all the testimonies we have heard over the last few weeks, we have seen that. All right. So what I want you to do is talk about a situation where you had a clear sense from God that there was something God wanted you to do. In believing God for that, how did he reveal himself to you in another way? It might be recognizing, um, hearing the mind of God together. It may be whatever it is for you. And I want you to identify the added spoils. Because like Jamie, I believe if someone among us or outside of here asks us, what is our journey of faith? I don't want you to point to these heroes. I want you to be the guys in Hebrews 11, 40 or 42 that and time can't speak. Yes? The added spoils. Okay, I'll try. I'll try. So, Noah, I'll preserve your life. But for him, the Bible then said later in, in, in Acts and then Hebrews, it counted him as part of the, 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 the seed of righteousness. So, more, more than just preservation of life, he had the ability to be numbered among the lineage. Rahab the heart. She's going to preserve her life if she, because she entreated the soldiers, don't kill me. But more than that, she allowed herself to be joined to the heroes of faith. Um, Abel as well, the Bible said that in Hebrews 11, he said not that just that he pleased God and he was a witness, but he talked about his blood still cries out, his blood still testifies. So I don't want you to think about spoils in terms of a physical blessing that comes from it, but spoils in terms of quite beyond the thing that God gave you as Abraham. I am going to give you a child, translating into, I'm going to make you the father of righteousness. I'm going to make you the father, the, you know, that has the sons that number the sea. And that takes us to stretch our minds, because what I don't want us to do is that God says, I'm going to give you a job. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to make some sort of provision. And we lock into a mono, a mono impression of God, just giving me the thing that delights me. This is not what these guys shared in. It got to be something more. Is that any bit clearer? Yeah? I want to see what, what God produces out of it for him, for the kingdom. So think about added spoils in terms of what benefit comes to the kingdom. So we're going to break up into some big groups. Everybody from Lucy and backwards to Tim, that's one group. Grant, you're another group on this side. From Lynn to Richard across there, this is one group. Mark to, to Pax, one group. 
if you start spinning around quickly. So I want you to discuss, you probably got a chance to discuss two or three examples, but what does fate look like for you in your walk? Guys, here, straight down to Dave and Tia, one group, come back to Elliot. Everyone here. From you to Wilco. All right, you don't have more than 10 minutes to do this, so you need to be quick. But I'm just trying to provoke us to talk about our journey of faith, all right? Let's conclude. This is what I want to do. I want to pick a few groups, probably three groups. I want someone to just account for something that they heard that really impacted them. Yeah, so I don't want a person telling their own story. I want those who are listening, something that resonated in your heart. What, what was it? What was it was shared? What increased sight you have had of God? Or what God is stirring inside of you? And what you're committing to go do about it? Who wants to go first? To the volunteers. Sorry, where's that mic? Nate? There we go. I just heard Rob talk about his job and how there's been times he's been there quite a while when he would have chosen to leave. Mm. He feels God is telling him to stay. And he used the word frustration. I think that clicked with me because sometimes you feel frustrated, but you know God wants to keep you where you are. Mm. And so it's a good thing, really, mm. although frustration is not very nice. Yeah. Um, who else? I like verse 37. Kind of connects, you're not seeing there. No. Someone read it out who's close, Nathan. 37. Thirty-seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to move out of the way. <laughs> they were stoned, they were sawn asunder. They were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, I think it's challenging. We often think a walk of faith. You know, you said frustration. And that don't be the thing to motivate you making decisions. Got to be God's word. Yeah? But sometimes that is part of our journey of faith. Dave? One of the things that was said in our group was... You can hear the word of God and hold on to the words, but it's not so much about holding on to the promise. It's about trusting the promise giver because it's about going back to him because the promise may look like one thing and you may put a spin on it. And uh, actually, he's got a whole different plan. And ultimately, it, it encourages me because it's about just digging further into God and loving him more and trusting that even if the words of the promise make no sense to you, you can just trust the giver because he loves you. Who said that in the group? You cheated. Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Avril said it in the Avril. group okay. uh, when she was commenting on someone else's story. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. And I like that. I'm glad that that point came out. So in all those accounts also, there wasn't a fixation on the promise, but the promiser. And walking in obedience allowed both the promise and the added spoils and an increased sight of God beyond the things that we, you know, we may initially assume that God was going after. One more before we wrap up. I guess somebody from this far side, where is he? 
if we just run the mic across the to so remember something that someone else said yeah, it's impact <laughs> upon you yeah. it is and um, yeah um, Anne was sharing about um, the continued provision um, over Andrew and she um, gave an example of when Andrew um, was uh, wanting to apply for college and she was told by the authorities that there was just no way that he would get funding for it and um, they pursued it and he ended up being there for three, four years. He ended up getting funding for four years of college. Um, yeah. What stirred in you when you heard that? What stirred in me? And what are you planning to Gosh, do about that it? Gosh, God, that you know, man can say one thing, but it's not, it doesn't stop with man. It's what God says that is the the thing there. Lovely. Lovely. We're gonna wrap up now, but I just have some scriptures here. Time don't permit us <laughs> to um, have an opportunity to go through these, but. Um, we take account of them and kind of read them and see if it helps um, crystallize this for you. And I found it interesting that it went back to when I saw that scripture again in Deuteronomy, that not just believe in God, but love in him. That's the thing that brought faith to life for the children of Israel. And it also echoes it in Mark 12, 29. All right, what, I, what we just did we wanted to share, get people to be bold enough to talk about their own personal journey. But more importantly, I also want you to be able to see God through the lives of the people who we live in community with. It's easy to talk about Samuel, David, and all those guys. But I want you to be able to be empowered to talk about Wilco's situation or to talk about, you know, all the situations that we heard about and really make this thing that we have really become living epistles. Yeah? that we are the ones who live in Hebrews 11, who through us, this faith walk will be completed. All right? So just to provoke us to think along that. Nathan, back to you. Thank you very much. We're done. <laughs> Take your children or watch out for them.